All right, there's nothing like starting a podcast on Saturday morning. Dan, you're in the studio. What's going on, my friend? Well, I got a took gotta, four yeah, hours I'm, to park because you're like some sure. sort of battle of the marching bands outside. Yes, all right. We have a, a and this game and this and chicken place today. next door. I don't know what it is with that thing, but there's like it's got to be it's it, it, it got to be violating some sort of code. There's 700 people in there. You know, they're all crammed into that thing eating. Eating their waffles yeah, and chicken. Got, there's not enough room in the place, and uh, they sell chicken biscuits. Where I come from, you don't you don't combine waffles and chicken. Where I'm, you might feed waffles to a chicken, but you don't combine those things. You don't you don't, you don't a, do that where you're from. All right, that's we'll right. Talk yeah, about that. Uh, I think you're <laughs> I, from here, right? Is that no, no, saying? no. I'm, I'm from Tennessee. All right, so it's good to be in the studio, and I'd like to announce it. The producer's back on the scene. He's back from a retreat. We don't yes. we don't ask him about that. Hi guys. But uh, <laughs> so here we go. He's there back. He, yeah, he as I was saying early, he's uh, not Dr. the sort Tom of guy Hattie. that I would think would retreat. This guy's a charge ahead kind of guy. You know, he like if a, there's he's he he's charge ahead. Yeah, kind he, of guy. he ain't putting in reverse. He's going forward. This is the new millennium, Tom Hack. It All is. Right, there we go. And there was a the sound of the studio. And uh, it was, we yeah. to silence that Every time you hear that sound, sound day, I don't know, when Android gets its wings. I don't know. It's something. <laughs> something. Speaking of, right, I was thinking about going to see that, that Joker movie. You guys seen that, The Joker? Okay. You know, that thing has got extreme views on it. Yeah, everybody yeah, either yeah, hates no it or, I mean, middle. like, loathes it. So right. I'm going to go in thinking we'll see what happens, you know. I'm going to be right in the middle you know. when I go see that. But I, I, I hope, you know, I hope there's a batarang. I'm just, whatever. Anytime I go to see him, you know, I want to see a batarang. Well, let me, let me just. Just say this to you. Mm. Um, unfortunately, Batman is not in this really? movie. Yeah, so well, don't get is. your hopes up. He is, well, but he isn't. Yes, and, that, but there well, are that's no better explained. That's better. Well, explained. Here's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to stand up at some point, and and, and I, I can make Batman with my fingers. You know, do one of them them uh, shadow things, and he's going to be there. So during key moments, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to introduce the Batman. The that <laughs> he's going to be movie. there, and everybody's going to like it. They're going to be like, okay. you know, <laughs> we, we may have to re- we may have to review uh, that movie yeah. coming up. But it looks like it's a lot about a person disintegrating. It's a mental really? health. You know what movie. I call that? I call that a Monday. I don't know if I need to see that. That's a that's a mirror. That's not a movie. What am I, I don't need that. You will find yourself in this movie. I am sure, my friend. So uh, I will. I will. Good luck to you. At least it's not three hours long. Thank goodness. Okay. So yeah, it's, remember uh, the last movie you tried to get me to watch? I, yeah, it was. I started it. I uh, don't no, three days ago. I'm still looking at it. It's so. good. It's good. Where you got to wear diapers when you see those sorts of movies. You can't. Well, you don't want to get up. You know, not always the thing I want to do for I mean, entertainment. To be honest, I saw myself often anyway, so it could be a 20 minute movie. I'm still going to need yeah, diapers. Here we but go. Too much information, <laughs> and we're going to move yeah. on to a topic. So, I asked you last time, I made the mistake of asking you what's on your mind and what's our topic, and you straightened me out on that. So, I want to make sure I, 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 I got some my ideas. Correctly. Here's the thing we should talk about today, and there's it's a concept that you see, um, it, it, it is um, beginning to pop up a bit more, and it's this notion of it's called post-traumatic growth. Okay. Wait. Post-traumatic stress, mm-hmm. right? There's that, yeah. Uh, uh, well, saying... I call that my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did I, sometimes I just set these things up, and I should uh-huh. know better because I've been around long enough, but I, I still make that same mistake every mm-hmm. time. Okay, but you're saying post-traumatic growth. growth. Right, growth. That is the big mm-hmm. uh, issue you're talking about here. Well, it, 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 in one way, it, it reflects sort of a... A uh, a change in the way we think about PTSD right. and trauma in general, and also the way we think about growth. I mean, all of those things are are that there's a there's a shift in the zeitgeist about what we should shouldn't do and whatnot in the therapy. And I have an example okay. which may be a bit of a stretch. Okay. I thought I'd bring it in. I want to make sure you talk a little bit about uh, post traumatic stress and the definition of that for our well, we'll our, do a little bit. Right. I want to make want sure to be able that we to get to that trauma. Right. We got to define trauma before okay. we can die. What Excellent. define? So we, thank you. But you guys, you guys heard of uh, this guy with the name of Nick Cave? Ever heard of Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds? Okay, he has a new album out called Ghostine. Well, about two years ago, his 12-year-old son was killed. Oh, it was um, pretty tragic. And so uh, this is his first album after his son's passing away. And um, in a way, it's him attempting to grapple with that loss. Right. Right? Right. And I recommend anybody go out and give it a listen. It is, um, it is phenomenal. But however, um, you know some albums are wonderful, but you're not sure you want to hear them more than once? Yes. So this could be that sort of album. Could be that. So yes. let me just say that you, you the, your eyes will not be dry. And it's not like he ever directly addresses. He never mentions 
there are all these these sort of uh, f- allusions to his son, uh, um, a, a small white ghost dancing. He mentions that several times at the end of the world. Uh, and then one of the songs, he the lyric is, um, um, I'm here where I am, and you are there where you are. Um, and just moments like that sort of, sort of right. you know, give you a, a, an example of some of what goes on there. But I think that's an example of, um, of the potential for doing something, of being forced to either grow or diminish in the face of some sort of traumatic event. And maybe that's what's asked of us in every moment of trauma. Maybe that's, a, we'll, that's a very interesting mm-hmm. concept, that mm-hmm. that moment in there when you're dealing with trauma, uh, you can go either way. You can, you know, mm-hmm. you can make that move toward mm-hmm. uh, depression and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that path, or you can work your way through it. So, There's a, you know, one of my favorite uh, Dylan quotes, uh, um, Pass me the salt. No, that uh, he's. I'm sure he said that a couple uh, times. Yeah, I'm but <laughs> one of my favorite Dylan quotes. One of mine was, too, by the way. Thank see, you. Uh, but he said the the emptiness is endless, cold as the clay. You can always come back, but you can't come back all the way. Uh, so, okay. so yeah. we, when we talk about this notion of growth and diminishment, we may have to sort of. There's a caveat there that the uh, scar tissue may ensue. So, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Never fully recover from mm-hmm. those kinds of situations. Again, think about my wedding night. Yes, I'm sure. I know it's a uh, it's trauma for now for all of us. It's, it's not, it used to <laughs> well, just be for you. And, I, I've, and I've, your where do you wife, see the but, video? That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> really poor production on that. All right, no, but so the idea then is growth after this stress mm-hmm. when this moment of stress mm-hmm. happens, and how do you do that? How do how does one sort of mm-hmm. You know, grieve appropriately and then pull themselves back out, and never fully, but pull themselves well, back but out. Maybe what we can do is we can sort of define the terms, because you know, I, I like a definition of trauma that comes from the psychoanalytic literature, and it's uh, that trauma is anything that arrives before you have a chance to create it. Right. So there is a way in which all perception is actually apperception. All perception is uh, we dance with the things that we encounter, even at the most passive level, right? The light that's bouncing off the things in this room, we filter it out due to the limitations of what we're able to perceive in our sense organs. And so at the most passive level, there is, a, there is an, an active shaping of the world around us. And what happens when something arrives that we can't shape? that we're not prepared for, that the templates or the heuristics that we have in place to be able to allow us that sort of dance, what if it's too big for those? Boom, right. shatters. And we talk right. about how it, it shatters the texture of the reality we've constructed. So there are two things to think about. There is trauma and the idea that reality as we know it is is not a given. It's a constructed thing. Not only is it constructed, but it has to be maintained. Right? Uh-huh. So there is there is an active need for generating this sort of homeostasis that gives us the possibility for a reality that we can exist in. So you're saying maintain the trauma in a, in a certain way that, you know, when we talk about post-traumatic stress, we talk about these ideas of re- reoccurring events that mm. trigger the trauma for mm. the person. And it's almost a maintenance. It does kind of continue over well, time. Well, an individual who is um, who has... Um, undigested trauma because part of inherent in that definition of trauma is at some point the traumatic things we have to find a way to create so often something arrives we can't create it but later on we have to and part of what happens in flashbacks part of what happens in 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 being triggered is there's something that we've yet to be able to dance with in the right way to weave it into the reality that we're in uh, there's a, a pair, they're not the same, but there's a parallel between dissociation and flashbacks and psychosis. Hmm. They're both a nervous system attempting to be able to make the best of a bad job, to do, do something with what with something that's occurred. Hmm. Okay. And part of what happens in therapy with folks with, with trauma is, uh, you know, there's a saying that you got to name it to tame it. You have to be able to begin to trace the outlines of the trauma that you've had and to be able to do something with it. Hmm. There's a... A friend of mine who's a really good clinician was talking about this in a talk we were having a couple of days ago, and the idea that it is it is fingering the wound, that um, there is something about the sense that we have to make a sense that before uh, that there is there is the cut, and then there is the suturing, but there may need to be something in the middle in between, and with a trauma, 
often there isn't even a suturing. There's simply a cut, and there's the potential for either some sort of um, pretty heavy scar tissue or the fact that it's something that continues to bleed. And, but the, uh, the thing in between may have to happen before you can begin to do the, the, the suturing part. Wow. It does, it does sound like a lot of people have gone through traumas in their lives. I guess we all have, to a certain extent, uh, things that arrive before well, we th- created it. So, well, think about uh, if you auto rank with this notion of birth trauma and that, um, that we are initiated into some, that there, some sort of trauma has to occur for us to be able to, uh, to, to leave the womb. And then, um, then we can take it a step further with Freud. And Freud thought that, um, that desire is triggered by trauma and that, um, you know, when we're in the womb, we don't have to worry about hunger or maintaining um, uh, warmth. Um, most of our basic physiological functions are being taken care of as we're, you know, floating in the amnio- amniotic sac when that's burst and we suddenly come into a world where um, he talks a lot about that the breast never arrives quite on time. That, and he imagined that um, sort of placing himself in the, in the, uh, in the place of a baby, that what, um, what sort of horrible thing to suddenly feel hunger for the first time, to feel that there's something in your core, something with teeth arising inside of you, and what do you do? Mm-hmm. How, does a, mm-hmm. how does a newborn infant, how does it name this state that it suddenly feels for the first time, and then to suddenly feel dependent on something to arrive to be able to, um, to, 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 to put this to rest. And so for Freud, that's the, literally the birth of, birth of thought. The first thought is a way to be able to deal with the delayed breast. Then it's, and um, if you fast forward to contemporary, contemporary sort of um, neuropsychological models, um, thought is a way to generate homeostasis. Whenever there is hunger, or any sort of desire, or drive, whatnot, we have to think, and our thoughts, and then the subsequent act- actions allow us some way to maintain that equilibrium. Trauma is something that arrives; it boom, generates a disequilibrium, and it remains with us because um, until it is processed, we are sort of uh, it, we are stuck with it. Right, and that's the very beginning. Then, at that <clears throat> point, uh, mm-hmm. as you. Uh, talked about at birth so then there's the rest of life that Mm. these traumas are continually kind of Mm. coming up for us to deal with and then there are the major traumas that really shake the system like nothing else Mm -hmm. and you have to be able to to manage that somehow you have to deal with it Mm. well i do uh in my private practice i do a lot of work with soldiers certainly i was doing a lot of work with soldiers after um the iraq war and 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 whatnot and so they would often be deployed and they'd come back and they would have a host, you know, there's, there is um, physical trauma, emotional trauma. Even, there's even a concept called moral injury, that, um, that uh, um, uh, the idea that uh, the way you think about the world, you, uh, as, as, a, as an adolescent, most of these individuals join the military around that time, with this, this sort of patriotic notion of love of country. And that, you know, there's such a thing as justice and this and this and this. And suddenly to be in a situation that's far more morally ambiguous. And that in of itself generates a trauma. So they're physical, emotional, moral traumas. There's yeah. a host. This is, this is like a continual thing. Is this mm. life is trauma? Mm. I don't know. Just said well, that, but th- that, that's where that sure notion of post-traumatic like growth comes from, you know. We've talked in here a lot before about the different difference between accommodation and assimilation and that that often the we have to have the maps we have of our world have to be torn in some way for us to grow if not we're sort of stuck with them we sort of are right. trapped with this way of thinking about the world and being in the world and it may require something to cut us you know mm-hmm. so maybe uh, uh, all trauma all growth requires at least a minimal amount of trauma major trauma maybe that's a different thing and I always have this mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. when I think of when I talk about this in, in teaching and whatnot I'm I always think of a continuum of trauma, right. and think about like the most um, um, from the most sort of minimal to the most major. You know, major ones we know that's you know that, that can be sexual trauma, that can be physical uh, assault, these sorts of things. Um, um, uh, lots of things can generate this. But let's move the scale back to its most minimal, and um, you. you 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 got like the kids, right? Kids. Yes. Okay, yes. kids. Yeah, yeah. They're they're much bigger now. They're 
Well, my sides are trauma. <laughs> that's a major trauma. They were minor trauma when they were smaller, but yeah, no, yeah, that, <laughs> I'm totally on board with the. But, uh, but that, that's a lifelong trauma. It does seem. And I ever can had? Give you ideas did they ever play with them Legos? Yes, of course. Okay, so have you ever stepped on one? Yes. Okay, so I have sort of a scale for this. Like, <laughs> there's something about waking up in the morning. Going downstairs to pour yourself a bowl of like I don't know I I like them Kashi cereals. Ever eat them Kashi cereals? They're uh, good for you. I, I'm put some soy Dracula, milk. I think we brought up before on this. You put some of, soy milk in your Kashi cereal, you know, and by, by basically all Kashi cereals. Somebody got the bright idea to go out and like take some bark off a tree and a couple some, of twigs. Yeah, there's some put it in a box and some other things there. Yeah, <laughs> you, just, you put your soy milk in, some, you know. Some people, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, so if you start your day like that, then it, it's a, it's all up uphill from then. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. have your breakfast yes. be horrible. Okay, you're so saying from that's now, trauma. That breakfast set, sounds like a lot of trauma. That, that, that's some trauma. Okay, so but you're walking okay. downstairs to pour your kashi milk. You step on the uh, the um, the Lego. Boom, oh, yeah. hurts, right? Oh, the, yes. That's a minimal example of something arrives before you have a chance to create it. And okay. it, even though it may not, quote, sh- sh- shred your reality. I'm trying not to say P words. Shred is S words work. I, today okay shred your reality and so when that happens th- <laughs> we'll have to come back to that reference no one knows what you just said but yeah, it's, okay, it's, it's, it's an in joke yeah s words are yes, okay, okay s words yeah. okay so so when that happens what is demanded of you for a brief moment there's this there is this um your nervous system is in a state of disequilibrium yes pain shoots up right, right? You got that pain. so suddenly you go outside your euthymic window and you're in this place of like a, of of tension and yes. demand of some sort of yes. discharge now mm-hmm. most of us in that moment we step on that lego what do we do we make a noise we scream we might we say go, a curse word we tell you a curse word we do right. lots of things and yes. like what that's you know that's what most people do right right sure. like, yeah okay so okay. that, that is a that. discharge of said tension Right, and so then you go about your day. Right? But what if in that moment? So th- this is the minimal example of potential post-traumatic growth. What okay. if in that moment there's you, you do something else with it instead of just simply discharging it? What if you were to say, "Okay, this is the upteenth time I've stepped on a Lego. I've, this is a seventeenth Lego. Maybe um, I need to talk to my son about generating, you know, helping him develop responsibility." Think about, you know, I mean, he's, he's already 32. He shouldn't be leaving these things laying around here. <laughs> that's, that's, you know? the, uh, that's an issue. No. <laughs> that is. But, yeah, so you're going to talk to him about, hey, can you put those Legos back in the box? Right. So, <laughs> so, so we talk about post. So there is the potential for, as opposed to simply discharging the tension, there's the possibility of opening up a thought and a, and a feeling in between the experience and the discharge. And therein lies the potential for growth, right? Okay. So anything that okay. happens to us, it's like a letter that we've received in the mail. If you most of the time we simply throw it in the junk bunk, junk pile and then throw yeah. it away. Yeah, sure. What if we open it? Oh, and then we do go. something with it, right? We have Boom. an offer for you kind right. of thing. Yeah. And then Been it's there. junk mail and the next thing you know you got a timeshare and you're, <laughs> next you're time hanging out in Opa like a timeshare and you got to go down a long list of things yeah. there that By uh, the way, I bought an, I bought further. a timeshare for Opelika. You know, come on. I mean, What's like, up? you know, get uh, you, we should have consulted with some people before uh, that, yeah, but uh, I'm sure they're fine. We don't want to well, take you know, anything away they from got, they got they got some chicken and waffles. It's, uh, okay. Actually, they don't even have chicken and waffles in Opelika. Uh, yeah, well, so you're saying that the trauma <laughs> happens, we had that immediate reaction, but mm. listen, we had that opportunity right after that. Mm. Right? Well, th- th- there's actually an experience that, um, and this would be the goal of sort of a cyclonic way of thinking about things. Sure. Opening up a space so that one has a chance to be able to generate a curiosity a curiosity about the things that you experience. Right. A minimal amount of self-reflective function to be able to dance for at least a moment with the thing that you're experiencing and to open the letter and to have some potential appreciation for why this happened, what happened, and then the possibility of doing something with it, i.e. growing from it, right? Okay. Wow, this okay. happens. So the, the the idea is that we're going to take that trauma mm-hmm. and we're going to work on it mm-hmm. to get us to a better it place. Could do, it could do something. And in this case, right. if this is okay, the 17th yeah. time you stepped on a Lego, yes, then you, there's the potential, got to do something with this. What do we got to do, you know? Yeah. And since infanticide is frowned on, 
Am I right? I think it is more than that. But yes. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. slightly but frowned you on. You have that thought. You yeah. just can't act on it. I think. You can't, that's you know, that's you that's may the think, to, think to yourself, you know, he's still small. The, I don't have to, the hole I have to dig is not going to be, you know. I'm going to try to it. bring this back real quick here and talk <laughs> do it about when the he's, opportunity. When he's taller and he's no, six see, feet, that's, that's a whole lot can, bigger you hole can, you got to dig. Continue to go, and I'm trying to reel us back in. But you have to come up with some sort of solution. You have to come mm. up with some sort of response. Well, most of our solutions are you don't simply discharge for the 18th time. So, yeah. yeah, but most of us would simply discharge that. Or, and another solution would be it could be you know we just yell at the kid. You know, right? You little whatever, whatever. That's you know, right. that's right. That's probably one of the first things that happened. Uh, <laughs> given, <laughs> given what yeah, why do you? But uh, <laughs> but even that is not necessarily because because part of our, our job right is is to grow a responsible adult who will go out and make good choices and make the world a better place. We you wouldn't know, often I would, think I would like to stop Paul just for a second <laughs> and underline that thought. I'm not sure everybody's on board with that, but I really think it's a great. <laughs> it would be a yeah, good just, idea. Yeah, let's yeah. just try to get that. To Actually, that what out I've been there. doing is I've been just sort of I, my kid just turned 13, so I've been. I'm, I've been figuring out how much he costs me, and oh, so at some okay. point I'm going to start turning numbers. a profit. No, no but at no. some point this is going to turn around, and I'm going to start have, getting money. Do I have news for you, my <laughs> friend? Uh, yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. I'm thinking 18. As you get older, the things cost more. <laughs> really? Because I'm thinking like and the the house, Oh, you no, got to no, up and put down a. You know, that's <laughs> what it is. Okay, well he's getting a he's getting a pogo stick. That's what he's getting. You know, that's all. It's, <laughs> you can you can bounce to work. Yeah, but um. But yeah, so we we do something with it, and it'll help us grow. And does it help us, um, perhaps, in the next time? Because so we start using these um, events that occur before we create them. Uh, we're reacting, then we're looking for some a moment of growth in there, mm-hmm. what we could do, make a decision, be in the moment. Is that helping us with the next trauma? If well, we're not sure when that's going to happen and what happens when you, with that. So. When you're able to take that that stepping on the Lego and you're able to process yourself, it becomes a way for you to grow, for the, your son, whoever the case may be. It be it, there is the potential for a, a broadening, a, a, a deepening, and um, that's – and part of the reason I use this as an example is it, it, that's difficult. Most of us step on the Lego and scream and then yell right. at our kid. Right, sure. And that's it. that's on the f- the lowest that that's on the smallest part of the continuum. It's 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 here. As sure. we begin to move up, it becomes more difficult, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think of like I may, I may be wrong in sort of placing this in the middle, but I think um, if the Lego is 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 on on this end, maybe yeah. in the middle, heartbreak. Okay. Maybe that's maybe that is sort of uh, the next level of trauma. And what do we do with it? You know. Okay. Uh, you're, uh, you know, you, you've been, okay, you, you, you know, if you've been, I don't know where, you're about to invent, uh, this, well, this it's funny. Event Normally when I pause, through, well, here's what's I'm happening. Okay. Here's what I, okay. I'm editing because I'm like, I can't say that. Yes. I'm like, well, so it's there's, about time. There, no, no, trust it, me. There are a lot no, of things no, I don't no, say. No. <laughs> I'm like, it was funny, but that's really inappropriate. So please start the editing <laughs> and move, so, we'll move forward with that. Because and it was just, funny, but it was wildly inappropriate. Yes. Yes. Okay. So far we haven't sensed. Of you too much, but uh, it's okay. It's just, you I'm know, good. I can't, I can't I, go I'm that good. way. I, I've also with these kind of long-ended things, I lose the uh, the thought, the thing, <laughs> the moment that we were talking about. What was yeah, the well, topic again? So I think it was, you know, it's okay. it's, uh, it's about uh, theremins. We're talking about theremins. No, but, that, um, that was before the con- the the start. All right. Uh, so heartbreak in the middle. Boom. Right. Yes, okay. That's where we are. So think about it. So in some ways, a breakup is a little like stepping on a really large. Le- a Lego. It's yeah. a, like a Lego that you step on and then gets a large. That's lodged in your chest cavity, right? right. Okay. But you know, but <laughs> no, we, 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 we were it. talking about Nick Cave. Uh, there's the yeah. way in which the ability to be able to finger that wound, the ability to be able to stay in that space, generates art, right? Think right. of all the great right. songs sure. that have come Absolutely. out of heartbreak, right? Makes sense. It um, makes sense. And, and every ACDC song I can think of. Um, I'm kidding. I wasn't going there, but uh, <laughs> it's not no, really. But, I, but I, I see what you're saying. So some some would use art as a way of getting to that growth that you're talking about. Post Maybe it it it, so it, it um, leasing understanding. It's still a form growing. of discharge, but it's discharge in a way that may um, that may um, uh, as the Lacanians say it it in, it increases the texture of the symbolic order, right? 
Mm. It grows culture. It, it, okay. All of us have to right. swim in culture and the symbolic and with words and whatnot. And anytime a really good artist, even a so-so artist, when they create something, that grows. The, the ocean of culture that we swim in expands, right? Like and it. so, um, like and, and we are all the better for it, right? Even if you never have never heard that song before, it enters someone else's ears, and their movement within this symbolic cultural structure, you get the ripples from it, right? Sure. So it goes, Poof. Sure. That, that's a uh, yeah, and for and for the artists themselves, what uh, it's some relief? It's it's some, could be you yeah, know, uh, some way to kind of help heal the wound and. Uh, mm -hmm understand it better and do something mm -hmm. about it do something active though if you've it. ever uh, ever listened to that band ever that band called the cure yeah you know if you notice it not happy stuff right no it tends to be a little uh so you know it's not a it's not bouncy it's not uh yeah yeah it's yeah we don't yeah i don't know if it's uh what whatever happened to the happy happy-go-lucky song uh, that no we're we're working through our trauma so we'll say there, there is a there is a happy cure song friday i'm in love ever heard that cure song no. Okay. Not a not a huge not a huge Cure fan. No, so no, that's not, not that much. I think no, so. No. <laughs> sorry, they, uh, sorry, that that reference is. Uh, we we could pull uh, our ex executive producer in. Maybe he would know. Uh, but uh, I'm not I'm not so sure that not really. They right, well, said. Well, go ahead with your point though. <laughs> My point is like is that, that, that there is something about some art that um, that it, it creates a space for us all to suffer together. Okay. When I think of like you know like sad songs, sure. you know, and, and we've talked about this before. This notion of the euthymic window, um, the window has a, a an upper level and a bottom level, and there's something about staying within that sadness, sad movies, sad songs. It pulls us right. just at the bottom of that euthymic window, you know, so we're able to experience it. But again, things grow, and so I think in some ways yeah. those are all the trauma. Grew the, am I wrong? Would I be safe to say? Is there ever been a song that was written that didn't have some sort of trauma as a kernel? Maybe you know a little like a like the irritant that forms the pearl in an oyster. Am I wrong? Um, uh, th we're gonna have to think on this one uh, mm. just a little while to just see. Maybe some pop song that. Uh from the monkeys or something uh, i know maybe well, not i don't know uh, neil diamond some, wrote some, some of the best song. monkey tunes you know um, yeah that's true so uh, had his of, uh so i didn't even at least a couple uh i think even there like like for instance if um if there's a need to create a fake sun it's because the real one's missing so even I think the happiest songs are probably some attempt to keep something at bay, right? right. To walk into okay. a dark room and turn a light on. That's what there the song go. is. Yeah, and and also <clears throat> the the I I think I was just thinking about movies do the same thing. You know, they have that mm. moment of tension and they're working through a plot point and mm. everything looks uh, terrible and then they come out and of course a lot of the movies we see, maybe the it's changing a little bit now, but a lot of the movies from the past ends in this wonderful happy right off right. into the sun and that's it it's right? like euthymic window uh, what we call those um they're called the uh, um vitality states that's what uh, they're often referred to so a movie has really real excitement and almost gets you to the point of anxiety and then it moves you down for a while and then it may get sad and then more excitement so it literally finds a way to sort of play your emotions right well we may have to go back and we may have to look at um this movie that's out now called The Joker. And we the talk Joker. about that. That you sounds know, like I, we're on the downhill slide. Well, uh, right you there. haven't you haven't seen it yet. With no happy moments. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So I haven't seen it, but that, so that maybe that's something we talk about next. But maybe we can. Maybe you'll have a chance yeah, to maybe, watch it. Uh, yeah, maybe you can <clears> find the, um, you know, the moment in there where it's uh, it's uplifting and mm. uh, there's a batarang. Then it goes downhill. It sounds like a deterioration into mental illness. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that's without having said you can do that on the internet you can talk about things you've never seen and it's accepted mm -hmm. uh you have no expertise in as a matter mm -hmm. of fact i think tom uh and on talk with mike and tom we said that last week you talked about what there's, there's talk no, about things you have no expertise in so uh, like uh, i don't know how that works but anything yeah. just yeah. about everything like, like i was I, don't know. I was thinking about doing a series on sex therapy sex tips there you go sex tips <laughs> All right. Here's one of my. Here's 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 my. Th this is my my best sex tip I ever came up with. Here it is. Okay. H here, here's you, you want to have hot sex, turn off the air conditioning. How about that? All right. All right. I, I was thinking <laughs> it was going in another direction, but thank you uh, for that. Uh, let's just leave it at that moment right there. Turn off the AC. Uh, turn off. <laughs> 
Wow. We well, see, I was expecting some <laughs> sort of trauma there for a moment. I was prepared. Well, I was prepared for the trauma. Trust but, me, uh, it's a, it is a trauma for my wife. But, um, <laughs> Go boom boom. Okay, you so. know, if we get a trap set in here, we're going to have a guy in the corner. Uh, he's going to have the drum. Ta -ta 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 boom. You know? But we we talked about that a lot. But uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it, it would it, be playing be a, a lot every it'd day. It'd be a trap, all right. <laughs> but okay, so we got the middle. We get to the the far end. It becomes far more difficult when we talk about the the any sort of assault. Folks who survived. Um, I was talking to somebody who had survived a hurricane, and they were talking about you know even 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 with some idea of what they they thought they knew what they could expect, yeah. but what arrived was again something they really hadn't didn't have a chance to create and so when we get to someone who's been mugged someone who's experienced sexual trauma all these are events that if we begin to talk about how to turn those or make those something how do you finger a wound that's so big you know one that's open one that um or in these cases often particularly when it comes to physical and sexual trauma a wound that you can't get very close to it it is too big your, your nervous system automatically shuts it out. It automatically, we talk about that euthymic right. window, right. it narrows to a place to where you are only allowed the most minimal of affect up or down. And right. anytime you move outside of that, you break apart, wow. right? Yeah, that's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea, too, that uh, traumas reoccur, mm -hmm. and, and in, uh, in, certainly in the psychotherapy world, we see people mm -hmm. who are working through the issues of early childhood traumas or traumas yeah, cumulative that there's this whole notion of complex cumulative trauma and right now, and the idea it has that a, there's yeah. a uh, there's this calendar then it trauma's mm -hmm. coming back up all because of this date and it reoccurs mm -hmm. and those kind of things mm -hmm. yeah if it um where trauma occurs can be really important because um um our nervous system is in a different place you know between the age when we're born and what is demanded as often is, is a more mature nervous system or a couple of nervous systems to be able to create a holding space where you can begin to do the growth you need to have. What if they're not there? What if something happens that's too big for that sort of nervous system? And then what happens, you find yourself sort of trapped in it. And, it, um, and um, you're, you, part of what a, you know, our, our, our body is supposed to do is it's supposed to learn pretty quickly what is, um, what is safe and what is not. And some of the messages that we learn very early like that, the whole world becomes something, something with teeth, right? Right. Um, uh, it's a dangerous world out there, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something that's uh, kind of on the topic a little bit, but because we, we talked about a lot of psychoanalytic is issues and, and concepts and terms here. How about the unconscious? Are we working, if you're working through this trauma, there are certain psychotherapies out there that mm -hmm. was so, uh, would really kind of stay in the conscious talk, uh, uh, a level or surface on that, if you will, but um, these traumas are so deep within us and they recur and they're, and they're so upsetting to the system. What's, uh, w what do you think about dealing with these traumas? How do you get at that unconscious trauma, those ones that are just sort of out of our awareness? How would, how would you well, Here's the thing, if, and this, this may be a little too technical, but technically trauma can't be unconscious. Only something that has been, to some degree, named can be repressed. So um, a, okay. a flashback a is not a return from something from the depths. It's re a return from something that still is. Right? So there's, they talk about the vertical, vertical versus the horizontal split. And with the unconscious, you take things that you, you know, um, like for instance, a wonderful example is, um, you know, if you, um, if you have some sort of, um, let's say that um, a family member, uh, your uncle just got married and his new wife reminds you a little bit of a babysitter that you really hated. Right. And it isn't that that memory is unconscious, but whenever you're around her, you begin to find yourself getting a little annoyed. Uh, she just you find yourself getting short with her. So this is something that that is um, uh, that is buried. And if you were to talk with someone and suddenly realize, wait a minute, you know, she does remind me of that babysitter I had, then you could suddenly deal with her differently, maybe, right? Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah. So but with the um, with the uh, vertical split, it's something that has literally just been 
it, it's it's been pushed off. It is split from the individual. Uh, flashbacks seem to come out of nowhere and as if you're suddenly stuck right. in the past again. So it's not, it is, um, and it, um, you can literally re-experience a trauma. In the midst of a flashback, it feels as if you were being hurt all over again in the same way that you were before. Right. So part of the goal of therapy, say with some therapies like EMDR and whatnot, they literally want to find a way to begin to get the trauma coded, put it into language, somehow find a way to be able to integrate it. Okay. And that then it becomes the possibility. So if this were a babysitter who had sexually abused you and you'd gone through treatment, if you were around the aunt, as opposed to triggering a dissociative state or causing you to fall apart, you might be able to register your anxiety. And because you have integrated the trauma to some degree, then you may be able to say, wait a minute, you know what? She sort of wears the same perfume as that. I think that's what this is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Absolutely. And usually sense. through, it doesn't have to be therapy, but somehow, in fact, what, if you look at some of what um, can be really helpful for folks who've undergone trauma, they often have a family, they have friends, they have connections, they get support almost immediately after the bad thing has happened, and right. so they find a way to be able to integrate it. And they can often talk about it in a way that would let you know that this is something that they've been that they have metabolized. It's integrated, and now, in some way, it is potentially unconscious. Make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. And I, and I appreciate that response because, uh, for me, uh, it's like uh, okay, we're talking at a surface level. We're talking about these events. Uh, we're trying to get at some of the emotion connected to it, but have we really gotten to sort of the iceberg theory? Have we really gotten under the water and saw how big that iceberg is and what it means mm -hmm. to us in our lives? And so, mm -hmm. uh, I think and with with global warming, us. we're not going to have to worry about any more icebergs. Okay. I, you know, you know, All if right, the yeah, Titanic yeah. was uh, was uh, we we built that we can build that thing in a couple of years and they're, they're never going to sink. They're never okay. All right, no more. All right. All right, but the, but the uh, it's it's real real interesting um, that the uh, the psychotherapy part of this, uh, which we, we talked about just just a moment ago, that that really can you help prepare for those um, resiliency? The, yeah, the resiliency piece. That's, that's where it's sort of going. So if I'm helping someone in a in a counseling setting. Uh, can we help them prepare for the next traumas or mm -hmm. even the well, bigger traumas? Well, first off, it depends on how good their insurance is. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, I got that. <laughs> so that's really, that it's gonna be, you know, because it's going to cost. No, the um, uh, part of what, you know, uh, they're, they're, I'm sure there's a genetic component to this, that then, and then there's also sort of the epigenetic environment that allows one to be able to, to make use of what you've been given but also a, uh, an environment that helps, that gives you this, the strength and the skills to be able to move forward in life, that you're able to internalize some, some, um, some good objects that you can pull from in moments of, of duress, all that sort of stuff. So many of us are lucky that we have, we've been given a number of things that help us generate resilience. You right? All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, those who haven't, part of what happens in therapy is we give them something they can internalize. They can. Uh, there's a corrective element in the therapeutic process where they uh, they internalize the therapist, and then as they move out into the world, they have uh, they can make make use of that therapeutic object, so they can talk to themselves in the way that they've talked. The therapist has talked to them, or the way that they've talked about themselves in the presence of the therapist. Right. 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 So that builds that resilience that they can take mm -hmm. on, um, take with them as mm -hmm. things happen. You know, there are just some folks who've had a pretty rough life, and they've had lots of trauma, mm -hmm. uh, an unfair share of trauma mm -hmm. in their lives. And you kind of see those folks coming in uh, to therapy. It's a good good idea to think, okay, i got to work through the immediate uh, – uh, topics and <laughs> issues that they're bringing forth, but also have to help with the resilience to make these folks, when they leave, have some tools to sort of manage what's mm -hmm. going to happen next and who knows what's going to happen next. Man, who does? Actually, I do know what happens next. I'm, uh, okay. I'm going to have a uh, vegan enchilada, hopefully. All right. Unless yeah. my, uh, my wife's currently at the, um, the uh, French restaurant around the corner. and Okay. So, she may force me to eat somewhere here, but hopefully I can go home and eat my enchilada. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's a lot to unpack in that. We're not going to go down that road on your enchilada today. But uh, I, got a, I got a feeling that we talked about some pretty important things this, this morning that have to do with, and you brought Post-traumatic growth. 
post traumatic and, and here's something, one of the one of the takeaways you may want to think about this is that it, it's important there's a potential for someone to feel belittled if they if the trauma they've experienced is not something they can quote grow from in fact you know telling um that there there are certainly problematic areas in this and we don't any one way any 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 way want to suggest that the bad things that happen to people are somehow necessary or that they can in any way be completely redeemed because bad things are still bad things and we hate right. that they happen. But the takeaway may be that if we broaden our definition of how uh, trauma occurs and how it may be necessary for certain levels of growth, then we can begin to open up the possibility that even with bigger traumas, there may be some things that we can do and maybe things that we need to do. Um, someone who has had, someone who has um, had a, someone I talked with a few years ago who was mugged. Mm-hmm. And they talk about, you know, they're literally walking to their car and somebody stands up and points a gun at them and then hits them with a gun and takes their money and walks away. And suddenly their idea of what the world is like has been shattered. Sure. It is, the, the texture of their reality has been shredded. They now live in a world where this couldn't happen. The bubble has been burst. And so the goal is what to do with this, right? right? And so... Obviously, part of this is to be safe, to think a little bit about where you need to park. I mean, those are the mundane things, but they're part of it. Yeah, sure. But also, it it moves to an even deeper existential question. Do we live in a world that is this dangerous? Are people bad? Um, do Is the world full of people, the majority of them wanting to hurt me? Right. Or is it a... So you begin to... Those questions can begin to get asked. And then you can begin to think about, you know, what do you do with this thing that's just happened? Then in this case, the individual was able to link it with some past traumas, to be able to talk about, you know, um, um, what they need. It really gave them a crash course, literally a crash course, on how to develop Mm self-care, right? Mm -hmm. This individual had never really been wounded in such a way that they had to think about their resources in the way that they now have to think about them. And in doing so, they strengthened those resources. Uh, Their connection, their spiritual connection, their their religious faith became something that they were able to pull from. They strengthened that. Their connection with friends and family. It in no way redeems and means means that they should have had this happen to them. But it happened... And by beginning, it set in motion a series of questions they were able to have, and they literally grew parts of themselves as a result of it. And that's an example of what can happen, at least. And maybe if there is the right sort of help, maybe will happen. Okay. I like it. I like it. So the idea of uh, post-traumatic growth... I just like the sound of it. There's something about it that yeah. says, "Hey, wait! This you don't have to carry this." That could be a band too. Post traumatic growth. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of your obscure bands that you bring in that no one knows and never heard of, and you've listened to the all twelve. Which of their is that I was cleaning out my I thing. And I remember this was back in the old days. I'd bring a list of my all the bands I liked. Remember, and I read it. Yes, I remember and it was, that. I it hope was, I have that. Uh, that would. It be was a like a, I had ten things. pages. I was like going through all these bands. Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> remember? I don't know. We got to look back uh, in the archives. I, sh- I hope I, I have that one. There. By the way, your archives pretty lengthy. <laughs> We're going to go back. There's so many things that you've said. There is. That uh, would probably get you into trouble. So I'm going <laughs> to keep those would. in the archives. The FBI, We're not you know, those out anytime yeah. soon because the public is not ready. I it need a life. Not ready. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Anything else? What's going go, on? Go ahead and listen to the new uh, uh, Nick Cave album. Go Steen. Go listen to it, everybody. All right. That's what we'll do. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, my friend. I think that's about it for today. I'm glad you're here. This is Got Therapy. Mm-hmm. Dan Rose, Michael Baltimore. See you next time. Mm-hmm.